There it is. There it is. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Down the Mongo, shit like that. Shit like that. Shit. Peace, blessings, glory, praise, and honor to the most high. Welcome to another episode of Assembly of Excellence. I am your host for this evening. Deep interview last of a writer's creed. How is everyone feeling tonight? We got some stuff to talk about. I'm excited. I've been pacing back and forth all day about this one. Actually, there was a little fire that was lit underneath me a few hours ago, and uh, I am on 10 right about now. We have some things to cover, and I would love to know and hear everyone's opinion on tonight's show on this topic in general shout out to my writers my content creators my poets my artists tomorrow the addict virtual open mic returns pull up if you want to hang out with us i think you're going to enjoy this show i'm excited for we got a new poet coming to the stage can't wait to hear what he has uh i'm gonna cut to the chase and i'm gonna bring my guest up do me a favor to the people that is watching make sure you're comfortable make sure you have something to drink make sure you're in your most favorite spot your eyes to the screen and be respectful this is just a form we we here to have a good dialogue and a good back and forth if you have any questions or any thoughts or any feedback to give to me or anyone in the panel leave your comments shout out to everyone that's watching from wherever you are right now i won't keep you I'm gonna go ahead and bring my people up here. Um, I have one. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait until the camera is turned on, Mister. Uh, Mister. Delonte. When you turn your camera on, sir, I will bring you up. Uh, I got Aaron in the building. I I got uh, Jason in the building. Bang, Let's go bang, ahead bang, bang, bang. And, and get into this one. Y'all show some love to these brothers too. If you're on IG or on YouTube, make sure you check in. Going on here. Hello, hello, hello. Sound check. What's the word? Can anyone hear me in the building? Mel, you're coming in loud and clear. Jason's a little quiet. Good to see you, gentlemen. It's been a minute. Is that better? A little bit. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, I can I can hear you. Uh say something else. Something else. Gotcha. Gotcha. How how are everybody doing this evening before we get started? I'm well. I'm um loving life, can't complain, no one listens, so I just keep on moving. Now it goes. Aaron, how are you? I've, I've been better. I'm about 24 hours into quitting nicotine. So this this is like a particularly rough uh, period in the transition for me right now. Yeah, the first two weeks are the hardest. Yeah. Certainly is. There he is. Hold on. Let me bring him up. I salute you though, bro. That is um, not an easy kick to get rid of. 
after I did it once, I'll, I'll do it but again. It, sound, but yeah, it I, sounds like it sounds. It sounds like you got your mind made up, though. That's the most important thing. Because if you ain't if you ain't mentally prepared to do it, then yeah. Any, I think anytime a person decides to commit to anything, they have to mentally be there already. Being like half in and half out never goes well for, for anyone that's make, trying to make a, a jump or a transition. 100% agree with you there. It's like it never comes at a convenient time either. When I find myself on the cusp of a big commitment, a decision I know that's going to suck, it's always at the worst time. That's when you know it's the best time to do it. Yep. <laughs> Mr. Table. Mr. Table. What's the word? It sounds like you're trying to talk to people. I hear you. It's kind of like, yeah. Why are you why are you trying to recalibrate your, your audio? I'm gonna go ahead and, and jump right I can, into I can this. Hear you, but can you hear me? No, I can I'm hear you cool. now. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, do y'all want to go around the table real quick and introduce yourself to the people who might not be familiar with you before we go into this, or do you, you want to just jump right into it? We can go around. All right, all right. Um, we can start with Aaron since he was first, then, and then we can go to Jason. Then we can close with you. Sure. So I'm Aaron. I make uh, electronic music under Air Bear and do um, basically just uh, just a internet comedian. Besides that. My name is Jason. Uh, I work as a leadership and business coach. I focus fundamentally on behavior and how to use that as a way of being able to uh, make successful changes with clients as well as the way that you approach business. All right. How y'all doing? My name is Six Rings, 28. I'm your head of the table. I'm the co-star, so let's let's go. So uh first I want to clarify I have no co-stars. As far as I'm concerned, everybody who comes up here has either given one hundred percent. So I don't treat anyone one way or another. You give what you and get what you give as far as I'm concerned. I just want to put that out there before you start that because we 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 about to really get into some shit. Um I just want to let y'all know that, right? I don't want to I don't want to come off like this is gonna be some well pretty dressed up type of a it's it's gonna be respectful, but at the same time, yeah, you start off the show hilarious to me and since you started off that way i have a question for for the, the panel and I have a question for the people because the topic tonight covers a, a a number of layers that i want to get into um in your opinion can temporary pleasure 
bring you positive results from a permanent perspective. Let's say you are lustful and that I'm not talking necessarily sexually. I'm talking about you just have a, a fixation for certain things, certain items, certain, certain intangibles. And you obsess over it so much that you, you have to ascertain it in a way that you need this, this, this dopamine hit. If you don't get it, then you just aren't yourself anymore. You lose, you lose your shit. You, you act irrationally. You, you're just all over the place, all because of a, a piece of whatever. Is temporary pleasure worth taking yourself and other people through hell for that temporary high that you get? I'll go ahead and start this off. Um, the two words that, that really um, came to mind were temporary and permanent. And anything that is temporary cannot lead to anything that is permanent. It's impossible. By its nature, things that are temporary lead to results that are temporary. And only things that are permanent can lead to things that are permanent. The only thing, the only time when temporary can lead to being permanent is if it's consistent. But then again, that means that it's not temporary. It means that, that it is, um, well, I, I, I guess, it, it, how, how do you define temporary and permanent? But the long and short of it is, if, if there's something that you experience that, that's ter temporary, this is a short-term experience. And short-term experiences may contribute to, but they do not define long-term experiences. There, you can have many short-term experiences within a long-term, within a long-term uh, time frame, but by its definition, it cannot create any kind of long-term effect. It is by nature short-term. So temporary can only equal things that are temporary. I'll stop there. I'll chime in. So call me strictly uh, devil's advocate, just to bully Jason, right? Let's say you have a temporary, temporary short-term hookup with somebody who just happens to be HIV positive and not practicing uh, safe sex, antiviral, stuff like that. Do you mean to tell me you couldn't have a temporary fling that leads to something permanent after that? Great question. Um, so, uh, again, these, now we're talking about um, actions and consequences. So, you, you can be, I mean, sure, you, you have sex with someone who's HIV positive. I mean, shame on you for, for not doing your due diligence and for, for uh, a lifestyle that, that's going to put you at risk. But at the same time, um, the while the intended consequence wasn't there, this 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 now in, um, invites a different set of circumstances. So you didn't have HIV before. Now you now you have HIV. This is this is now a consequence that leads you to a different set of circumstances. So yeah, that they can have long term consequences, but. Something, but something that is temporary, like I said, can can contribute to a long term, uh, can, can contribute to a long term process, but it, it, it in itself does not define that process because now you have you've introduced something else that, that is not necessarily a part of what you've talked about before, but you've introduced something new. So that that's that's how I, I would define that. Of course, I'm kind of tripping all over myself because I wasn't ready for this kind of question because it's, it's a damn good question. Um, and it, it makes a person think. Um, 
I, I would I would have to say that this is this is not a, a, a conversation contemporary versus permanent. This is more of a conversation of action, actions and consequences. That's all I would say. I can give you that, sure. So I think I think um, what Mel's driving at is: can you can you participate in something for uh, temporary pleasure and get like a permanent, long term bonus? I want to say out of it. I think I think that uh, to me it sounded like a very loaded question, right? Like a very heavily implied that you could not do things for temporary satisfaction and get a long term result out of it. Um, there was reference to dopamine hit and the, uh, you know, like needing to get that at the expense of other people and yourself. And like, I can see, I can see where that comes from. But if we think about like, why, why does the dopamine system exist in people, right? Like, obviously we have a reward system for a reason, right? Now there's all kinds of terrible things that can take over that reward system. Um, drugs, porn, other things that can hijack the evolutionary means of encouraging us to do certain beneficial behavioral activities, right? But I think that um, the reason we get a dopamine hit from doing something is because at one point in our evolutionary history, it served us to be doing something temporary. There are temporary moves that you can make that uh, serve to put you in a better spot. Um, you know, back when survival was a little bit more high risk than we experience now. Um, I'd like to hear what Head of the Table has to say about it. Uh, yes. Um, you say temporary and, and long term, permanent. Or, or, I mean, the only thing I can say mm -hmm. on it, the temporary, everybody do something temporary and, and uh, kind of suffer the uh, suffer the effects of it later on down the line. But I mean everything everything temporary to me is it, it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be uh it doesn't have to be suffering, you know, long term. Like like you can like you can probably make it you could probably have a have a, a temporary fling or whatever like that. And um you get you get you get kids out of it. Like it's a lot of relationships that, that went like that. You might get kids. The the temporary thing was the relationship. The long term thing was 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 the children. So I think the it's like a negative into a positive. Like, okay, the relationship was a negative, but the positive is that, you know what I'm saying, you get you get the experience, you know what I'm saying, your offspring. So it it it, it happens like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of it's a lot of situations that that people go through temporarily that can be beneficial long term, or it could be it could be like a learning experience. You know what I'm saying? Like like you mentioned down down there, Aaron, with the drugs and 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 uh, uh, what you say, porn addiction and stuff like that. Sometimes people need to people need to have something happen to them negative. You know what I'm saying? So they can get a positive out of that negative later on, you know what I mean? So it's all I look at it as all experience, and um, sometimes our pleasure can can teach us a, a big ass life lesson, you know. Just because something feel good doesn't mean it ain't it's good. It ain't good for your damn body or your damn mind because it can it can tear you up later on. So. Um, that's that's pretty much how I look at the temporary fun, and um, it it it'll show you you know be responsible down the line. You I do want to I I do want to talk about uh or or um talk to something that Aaron had said about the the dopamine hits and how yes th th this is a vital part of of our survival because it helps us to either be, become alert or to really in, become engaged. And studies have, studies have shown that when you only focus on dopamine as, as your primary driver for attention, that eventually it decreases and more is needed in order to get that same, that same level of, of, of attention. And, this can actually lead to, to um, some serious complications, uh, one of which has to do with 
um, don't mean um, depravity or don't mean resilience, which can often, which is often something that, that is seen in people with Parkinson's disease. Now, I'm not saying that every single person who, who uh, scrolls on their TikTok or their Facebook shorts or YouTube shorts feeds are going to develop Parkinson's. That, that's just stupid. But it's also important to note that while dopamine hits are necessary, it's also important to really follow that up with something that, that's a lot more long-lasting, either serotonin or oxytocin, in order to create a sustainable um, measure of, of result. While dopamine gets you, gets you engaged, it is the serotonin and oxytocin that really get you committed and have sustained action to um, create the result that you want. And it's really important to understand that dopamine, while being something that, that is that is a short-term fire, it's meant to uh, then carry on to a different system that's going to create a longer-term burn. So just to be a little more... Um, detailed in this this picture that i'm trying to pick you know create uh i agree with everyone's points i want to on the dopamine perspective that you and jason made um so I look at it from two different angles, right? I'm a nine to fiver. I get my satisfaction from knowing that I'm taking care of myself, that I'm the one that's doing the work, that my hands are responsible for creating a healthy environment for everyone who is utilizing the space that we all are in at that moment. Or I'm making sure that the house is protected. I'm monitoring the doors, the windows. If the woman that is in my life at the moment is moving in a way that is probably going to cause some type of ripple effect that could be destructive to the household either in that position i get my satisfaction from knowing that she trusts that i'm going to do what i am supposed to do genetically biologically spiritually all of that that's where my my hits come from. Now, that's subjective to some people. Some people might not even look at that as a positive. Some people might look at the the drug aspect as a positive. I look at it as a negative. I have my reasons, just like you may have your reasons for the latter. People argue these points all the time. I think what I'm I'm really trying to get out there to the public is that sometimes and you know uh head of the table he said it there's things that can do that can lead to things that you will be stuck with for the rest of your life. So is that temporary pleasure really worth if you're if you're if you put everything on a scale and you look at it from a, a, a realistic aspect, is it really worth that temporary hit that you, you get? Everyone has it. Jason, you, you you painted that picture perfectly. Everyone from whatever standpoint gets these emotions and these feelings and this this chemically balancing um 
treat that comes from doing something that you enjoy is it worth it I say, yeah, it is. I say, yeah, it is worth it if, if it's something you really wanted to do. Some people do stuff that they, they don't want to do. Now, is that worth it? Why do something you don't want to do? Because at some at some point, you know, like we we all we all a little older. People get older. And you can't sit up here and say that I that you're gonna do the same dang same dumb ass things that you did when you were younger or because you didn't think like that when you were younger. So like when you, yeah, it changes. But in, in that moment, yeah, you got to take responsibility. If if you choose to do something that you that you wanted to do, then yeah, you got to stand on what, what what come with it. So yeah, you got you can't you can't duck the smoke, none of that. Because it's a lot of it's, like I said, there's a lot of people that does things also temporarily does things that they didn't want any part of and but they got to take the consequences that came from that that wrong decision that wrong they might have got persuaded into doing something or something like that and they got to take the uh the consequences that came with that so why why run from the consequences that something that you wanted to do if you wanted to do it you it was your choice I'm going to push back on that because you, you, you said some things head of the table that, that I think really need to be investigated a little bit deeper. One thing you asked was, why would you want, why would you do something you don't want to do? Well, it really depends. I mean, what is the long-term goal? If, if you're just doing things just for the sake of doing them, and you're doing things because they're enjoyable, and that's the only reason. I, I don't know. I, I, I find that that kind of lifestyle, for me, would be very empty. It would be unfulfilling because there's no reason to just do things other than just, just to say you want to do it. It becomes very hedonistic. If you're saying that you do things just for the pleasure of it, and the pleasure becomes its own reason for doing it, that, that, that's very, it, it's very um, Ouroboros, where it's a, which is the snake eating its tail, it's basically self-serving. And I don't see the reason for doing things simply because they're enjoyable to do, and that's why you do them, so that you can do the things you enjoy doing. What's the goal? If you know what your goal is, you have no problem doing the things that you would normally see as beings that you don't want to do because you know they'll get you closer to what the goal is you have in mind. And I think that's the most important thing is making sure you know why you're doing it. Have the end in mind before you take action. That way you have a clear understanding as to what you need to do, why you're doing it, you know, an idea of how long it's supposed to be done for, and then you can move on. I think without that understanding, it becomes very hard to create any kind of stable environment for yourself or others. And it definitely does not make you someone who is uh, someone, other, uh, someone that other people can rely on. It becomes, like I said, very self-serving. And I have yet to meet a self serving person who has, one, enjoyed their life completely, and two, has been able to create any kind of sustained environment where they can continue doing that, where they achieve the goals they have in mind, if they have any goals at all. So I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I'll hop in on this one. So um, I think that I really liked the uh, the – dynamic interplay between table and Jason just now, because I think you guys both brought something important to the exchange. Um, I like, I like where tables coming from where it's experience based, right? Like you uh, pursuing, you pursuing a short-term pleasure leads to potentially some of your 
your life's greatest joys, right? Like I heard it put in perspective of kids, right? You get you get joy from your kids than a temporary pleasure justified justified bringing you your greatest joy in that respect. I think also, um, I think that the idea of using using whether or not you experience pleasure from doing something that you're involved in as a barometer for deciding if it sticks, if it's something you're going to continue to do because you do enjoy it. I think it's worth mentioning the connotations of the word pleasure, right? Like when I say pleasure, it sounds like I'm inherently referring to a vice of some kind. Like I'm like I'm committing a sin or doing something that people would naturally pursue in Vegas, right? right? If we if we view temporary pleasure just say for the sake of argument is like temporary joy. Now say I was trying to find out what sport I was cut out for. If I experienced a temporary joy from one of them, isn't that going to be my screen to let me know that that's the sport for me, right? Isn't that spark that I get with a particular experience going to let me know what I might be more cut out for? I think that um, you bring up an excellent point, Jason, in saying that people who you know, pursue this uh, hedonistic lifestyle where everything is about pleasure, rarely find it fulfilling. And I would, I would tend to agree with you. I just think, I think there's something to be said for um, incorporating both aspects of it, right? Like working in Mel's nine to five, uh, as he put it, um, you know, like following a little bit more stoic path, but not depriving yourself of little joys that make life worth living. I think that you can work towards a greater goal and still be capable of appreciating little joys here or there. I'll yield it. I think it's important to distinguish healthy, um, healthy peace. Um, what 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 should and what sh I don't know. Is 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 it's a. It's a it's a tricky one because you, you don't want to tell people what they can enjoy and what they can enjoy. But also at the same time, it's like, well, I want to be responsible here and say, look, the same joy that you get from sleeping around, you can get from not sleeping around, but that's unpopular. No one's really trying to hear that. Um, because you really don't understand like the differences and the contrast between getting this this fix from abstinence versus getting this fix from actually exchanging bodily fluids. One is going to come off on top in terms of well, if I look at it, naked body on naked body. Yay me. Victory for me. I win. I get an orgasm. But on the flip side, even though you do get that that change and you get that feeling from it, you don't think about the other stuff that comes with it that might not be so popular and might not be so favorable or fun. The headaches, the arguments, dealing with someone's personality that you might not be ready for the list goes on versus trying to and i'm only using this one particular piece as an example because there's really many other ways you can go with this if you take sex out of the category because you know i had a uh exchange of words with a, a, a certain individual over this because I guess we segue in slightly but not too slight I was being uh, a little ridiculed or they called themselves trying to roast me because of me being celibate as if there was something wrong with it and me at 40 versus me at 20 years old, the difference between 
what I was doing then and now is not the same. I do not look at sex the same. I do not look at interacting with other human beings the same. Um, once you've experienced certain things in life between you and another party, there's absolutely no way that you can go back to the way that you saw things and the way that you looked at things the same way anymore. There's absolutely no way you can do it. And we're we're in a, a, a place right now where it's cool to be sexually active. It's cool to smoke and to drink and to party and to be out at all hours of the night, even though you got kids in the house. It's cool to be ignorant. It's cool to be ratchet. It's cool to be belligerent. It's cool to go back and forth and argue with somebody over the internet and then post it for clicks and likes. That's what everybody is looking at as an identifier for, for popularity and, and what's manly and what's womanly. I don't see things the way I did before for great reason. It's like, do you, all right, so do you shame a person for having principles morals and standards we kind of touched on this the other day too do you judge a person because they say look i was there before i'm not there anymore because i've seen what it happens to my body if i got a scale of the pros and cons of what i embrace and what comes of what I embrace? Does the pros outweigh the cons or do the cons outweigh the pros? For me, the cons outweigh the pros. So I would rather stay away from the opposite gender because of everything that's on my list. Now, this applies to everything, not just sex. So I don't want no one to think that I'm targeting sex in general. This is a overall scheme that I'm trying to go into. I said this on a stream that I did yesterday. Once you open, so hold on, let me let me try to reframe this. Your eyes are the windows to the soul. This is your this is your vessel. This is your property. Just like a house. Once you lay your eyes on something, you allow that to come into your house. And whatever you allow to come into your house, that's the part, that's the suggestive imagery that is the seed. Once that seed is allowed into your house, and it's allowed to be planted anywhere in the soil. The harvest comes. Well, what is the harvest? The harvest is whatever the seed was. The seed is whatever your eyes laid on. So the way I'm looking at life in general, not just about the physical, sexual stuff. The way I'm looking at things is the way I talk to a person. Just the way that we exchange words. If I cuss at you or I accidentally misword something, that alone can be a seed of discord for whoever's listening because you might not hear it or see it the way that I am saying it. So everything really comes with a warning sign to me, at least. My my cons outweighed my pros. So now it's like, well, I see I see what type of women I'm looking at and what type of uh, lifestyle they looking at and the way the world is set up. I'm looking at my path and my walk. I'm not talking about me personally, so don't think I'm I'm just saying if I'm looking at it from anybody's bird's eye view just randomly as somebody who's gone through something and you came out of it 
you went through hell. You you cried. You you bled. You sweat. You you couldn't sleep. You went through programs. You went to therapy. You did A, B, and C. You, you tried to drink to heal. You tried to you you did everything under the sun to feel better. Nobody was there with you. And then you finally climb out of all of that misery and all of that suffering and struggle. And you finally figure it out. You go through your dry season. Why would a person like that that's gone through all of that want to put themselves in those type of environments again? I'll leave, I'll leave it there. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I Enough hear you, man. I, I hear you, man. That's 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 some story right there. That's tough. I mean, only thing I can say is on that on that note, uh, male of man, is that uh, everybody got their preferences, and um, they entitled they entitled to uh, to do and do what they want. You know what I mean? But you gotta look at it like this, though. If you just like baseball, man, if you if you up on the uh, the plate. And they and they throw you, they throw the ball, and you don't never hit hit the ball. Then it, then it's gonna be like, what if? You know what I'm saying? You could you could strike out about two three times, man. You want would you would you want to keep striking out, or would you want to know what that home run feel like? So I, I look at it like this: Yeah, people have went through suffering, and people went through this, and people went through that. But it's it's a it's a prize at the end of that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? If you if you going if you going to suffer through something or anything in this life, you might as well get a reward for what happened. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? It's no it's it's a reward on every everything every negative it's a positive on the other side. But if you don't open that door, if you don't take risks, if you don't uh look at it from the uh like 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 they say from the bright side then what the hell are you going to get you're not going to get no uh reward and then and also i would say uh you know you know talking about story pleasures uh you might be a, you might be a guy that let's just say you Excuse me. <laughs> Let's just say you you might uh, bang about uh, 30, 50, 30, 40 chicks a year. You know, you just a you just a big time bachelor, big time player or whatever. You might you might go from that lifestyle to saying, man, you know what? I'm tired of being with with all these women. I just want somebody that that's that's for me. You might. Yeah, you might you might just want somebody just for you. <clears throat> and it ain't nothing wrong with that. But people but life changes people's minds, thoughts. And you're entitled, you're entitled to grow. You're entitled to grow on your life journey. I'm just saying, you know, let let that let that be uh well take I'm gonna say take the lesson. I'll say take the lesson and create the blessing. How about that? Because everybody have lessons and and paths and walks that they take, but take that lesson and turn it into a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Turn that frown upside down. You know what I mean? Like that. Don't don't you know? Don't be you know. I mean, everybody get knocked down, but don't stay down. Should I say that? You know, everybody got to get up. And um, and when you do, I mean, you got power. I look at it like you got power. Now, it depends on what's it depends on what's pleasurable and what's temporary for 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 your for that individual. You know what I'm saying? Whoever that individual is, it it could be the small things. It could be it could be the fancy things. But my thing is learn learn from learn from what you've been through, so you can become a better you. If that makes sense, you got it. Aaron, if you want to go next, go ahead. Yeah, why not? So, um, 
I really like the way Head put it. Uh, from the context of uh, good rewards are worth suffering for, right? To me, that speaks to delayed delayed gratification. Like some some things are worth putting off for the bigger payoff in the end, right? But Mel, I want to I want to bring it back to what you said. Like if uh, let's say theoretically, you and I have a, an interaction online, right? And you talk about you mentioned uh, being celibate and someone trying to someone trying to troll or roast you for that process or uh, for that practice in your life. And like for me, I'm not going to uh, identify somebody who thinks different from me and practices celibacy and assume that they're not doing something right or that they are worthy of ridicule or something like that. The interpretation I'm going to take from it is like are they forcing this upon me, right? Like if I have a, you know, a celibate dude in the chat who's telling me that because I'm not celibate, I'm doing everything wrong and I'm destined for failure, I think that's where I'm likely to take an issue with it, right? I would like to think that I'm smart enough to trust somebody's experience, but I know I'm not. I know I have to experience that for myself to be able to make an informed decision. It's like uh, it's like you said to me at the beginning of the episode, you know, when I talked about uh, quitting to com- or committing to quitting nicotine and you're like, you got to have your mind made up. Can't be half in, half out. Right. I feel like the only way people can have their mind made up about something big like, uh, you know, like celibacy, like abstinence, something like that is to have that experience for themselves with both sides. And I think that you know, like I would never want to deprive anyone of the experience they need to be able to make that decision for themselves. I'll go ahead and yield it right here. So as you were talking, Mel, and you were making the the case about how you see relationships now versus how you saw them when you were in your 20s. Uh, and ha- the, the decisions that you've made for yourself now and how they've led to ridicule. I find that people ridicule things they either don't see as being normal, it, it's not normalized, and so they take issue with it because with you not doing something that's normalized, the perception is that there's something not normal about you. <laughs> and that that opens up to ridicule. Deeper than that, I find that people who ridicule people for things that are, I, I guess for lack of a better word, things you could see as either admirable traits or uh, practices of discipline or ways of moving forward that are intentional. The ridicule is based on the awareness that an individual lacks the, that sense of discipline or or um, the capacity to really commit to something like that. And they feel like there there's a judgment they place on themselves. And instead of really examining that, they want to push it off on, something, on someone else. Brene Brown talks, uh, talks about this as being the shame and blame complex where when someone feels that there's an inadequacy about themselves they instead of identifying where what that is unpacking it and seeking to resolve within themselves they will get rid of it as soon as possible and project it onto someone else so they don't have to feel it and so they tend to deflect any sort of responsibility or any sort of um any, any sort of sense of of um, inadequacy on others and make the person who is who has made a decision to, to commit to something that is for that is a notable goal uh, for especially for for a reason make them feel inadequate for having that goal and it's it has nothing to do with who you are no decision that you make that anybody has any kind of issue with has anything to do with you. It is all about a, an individual's inability to either come to terms with or see the validity in themselves. And so they make it about someone else because they refuse 
to make it about themselves. They refuse to be the accountability they, they can they can uh, face with themselves. And there's a there's there's a lot of freedom in knowing that when someone is trying to roast you, it has nothing to do with you. It's all about the the way that a person views themselves and the situation and the way that they see themselves in a certain situation. It's it's really important to note that. And personally, I commend you because it's it's not easy to have that kind of to have that kind of mindset. I find that people who have been through the worst uh, in relationships or, or have been through the most uh, difficulty in relationships tend to come to this to this part where they begin to question whether they want to be a part of it again. Something that head of the table did say that I, I really enjoyed was under, well, that I took from it was understanding the why. And this again goes back to the long-term goal. Why is it that you're doing this? And making sure that if you're going to go through this, if you're going to practice celibacy, is it going to be a long-term solution? or a short-term solution? Is it gonna be something that you are going to make your your livelihood? Or is it really just as a way to fuel something else? Napoleon Hill talks about sexual energy being the energy that creates change. And if you expend the sexual energy on just having sex, you have no fuel left to really accomplish what you want by directing that sexual energy to something that is worthwhile, that you can put your emotional stamp behind, that you can really get excited about. You can create amazing things. So sometimes being celibate is you, is there for you to, to create a lasting and to create a lasting result that where that the energy is absolutely necessary to make that happen. I'm gonna end there. So, I, I want to say this. The reason why Proverbs is one of my favorite books is because it speaks about certain principles and the results of not following those principles. Jason. Aaron, head of the table. I paint you the picture. And shout out to uh, Mad Mystic, everyone over there on IG watching. Let me paint you this picture. Let's, let's say you know my entire life. You know that I am 10 to 15 steps away from walking over the edge. You have all the information in front of you. It's going to be your words that determine how many steps forward I take and how many steps back I think you're ultimately going to either give me the need to save and stop myself or I'm going to go the ladder route and fall to my doom because there's a saying I am my brother's keeper you are who you are you hang around with and who you associate with so if you're telling me that based on my decision to be more cautious of who i give my spiritual energy to who i give my body to who i give my mind to who i give my finances to who i articulate with who i sit down and 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 
you tell if you're saying, look, look, I don't man, go out there and get your nut off. Go ahead and do this and do that. It ain't gonna be there's no harm in that. And then and then the other person is saying, look, focus on your purpose, focus on your calling, do what you need to do for yourself to get right. And this goes for anybody because oftentimes, and I said this before too, oftentimes we have people in our circle that we think are for us when really they are being used. They don't know that they're being controlled or being influenced. So I got one person telling me, don't worry about women. Worry about getting your money right. Worry about getting healthier, getting stronger, getting wiser. The other person is saying, Come on, man. Let's let's go hang out. Let's go to, on a vacation and spend money that we can't afford to spend. Let's, let's we only live life once. Let's. Go. Who am I going to lean towards more, or who sh- who should I lean towards more? That's a rhetorical question. We all know the answer to that one. If you don't know the answer to that one, that's the problem. And I, first, I say I'm not bothered by it. I'm not bothered by the clowning, the roasting. I'm 40 years old. I've already done been there with the all that. I, I've seen it. I've seen what happens when you think with your 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 lower region and what that gets you. I, I've seen what happens when you make horrible decisions financially. I've seen what happens when you tell too much of your information to the wrong people, thinking that they're the right people. I've seen what happens when you have conversations in certain settings with people that you think are not going to go back and tell your information. I've seen all of it. I've seen the fake people disguised as real people. I've seen the real people disguised as fake people. I've seen the highs. I've seen the lows. You can't laugh or mock or joke on me and think that I'm going to be affected by it. You've ultimately done is revealed to me who you really are what you represent because I'm sitting here talking to you normally expressing myself. I tell you exactly where I'm at. Look, this goes for anybody. If you're, if you're, if you're someone who is emotionally responsible, spiritually responsible, you understand that you only have this one life to get it wrong or right. You can't keep continuing to play with it. These are your moves. I can't tell you how to live your life, Jason. I can't tell you how to live your life, Aaron. I can't tell you how to live your life, head of the table, or anyone else that's watching. You have to decide what is best for you. You have to decide if these people are are right for you, if they're going to elevate you, if they're going to edify you. Anything outside of that, anything contrary to that, to me, it makes you look like the enemy. I get the impression that you're trying to deter me from my goal. And if that's really what you're doing, because you have some hidden undertones going on within you, I would question yourself. I would look in the mirror and ask yourself, who are you really in this person's life? Are you really here for the reasons that you think you are? Now, I could be going overboard with it, but it goes back to what I was saying initially about the, the temporary pleasures and the permanent thing. I, but I digress. Someone stop me if I'm wrong. Tell me if, if I'm if you if if Jason or Aaron if if you on the phone with someone or anyone just just watching and on the phone with someone or interacting with someone that is always speaking negatively in your existence. 
they're, they're always saying something contrary. It's never lifting or building you up. There's always something that's trying to make it seem like what you're doing. And Jason, I love what you said about how uh, they make it look like it's not normal. It's, it's very normal. And, and, and quite frankly, we're the ones that violate all the time because a lot of the practices that we operate under are not what we are supposed to be operating under anyway. But that's a whole nother discussion. I just want, I hope I had a chance to kind of retort both of you guys, all, all three of you. But now, nah, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, no, nah, I'm, I'm great. You know, I mean, diseases out here, you know, you know how much is going on out here. You think I'm, I really care if you think that I need to get some? I, I, you think I'm that desperate? No, I, it's not. A, it's nothing. There's no vagina good enough in this world to make me just go out here and jump in it. There's no car or no job worth me selling my soul or my ass for. There's not a single person on this earth that is perfect enough for me to turn my back on the path that I'm on right now. You either are for the direction I'm going in or you're not for it. And that's how everybody can look at it. Because people are temporary and they're very fickle. They'll be on one day and then the next minute it's like you don't know them or they don't know you. So I, I turn it over if anybody wants to respond or anything. Uh, we still got a few minutes if y'all want to chime in, but yeah. Uh, all I was gonna say on that to piggyback off what you said about your about a journey, your personal journey and stuff like that. I mean, it, it goes back to what I said. Uh, everybody got a got a choice to make for themselves. You 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 hit it on the head. You say. All three of us got to do what's best for us in our life, and that's how it should be for anybody. I, but, but, but understand this though: understand when you choose something for yourself, something that that you want to do for yourself, you can't you can't be turning your neck around and 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 uh, raising your hand and all that and 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 trying to. You know, get some somebody else approval or anything like that, and saying you're doing great. That, that's not how life works. It's gonna be some people that's they they don't they don't want you to get go up there. We could be all we can be all playing the lottery. Uh, shoot, somebody gonna come off with that winning ticket. You gonna know who the win is by by this by his face who the loser is by their face. My thing is you got to be your you got to be your own your own hero these days. You can't you can't worry about and support the right like you, the right people going to support yeah, but I don't think you're going to get nobody to support if if you don't support. Nobody can't get behind somebody if you ain't going to get behind yourself. If you're not going to believe in yourself, if you're not going to go and take the extra mile and put the work in and all that for yourself. Yeah, it's, yeah you might start a small group and then it go up. It increases as you believe and go forth on your walk. You know, but just but my whole thing is everybody got different beliefs too, though. So it's like, okay. Somebody can walk this way, but that might get it done for that person. That don't mean it's going to get it done for the next person. They're going to go this way. And you got you to gotta respect, respect that person's stance, too, because there's more than one way to skin a cat. And it's not about doing it the same way as somebody. It's about understanding where somebody's at in their life or what's going on for them. And I think that's where the disconnect is. I think everybody want only think it's one way. It ain't it ain't no such thing as one way. 
you can do it you can do it you can do it a variety of ways but we all if, if the goal is the same and we all get to the same goal does it really matter do what's best for you you happy in the end and if you happy that's that's all that counts it don't matter who it don't matter if somebody happy for me for me personally it doesn't matter if somebody happy for me or not I'm I'm not I'm not doing this to make other people happy. I'm doing it to make myself happy. You know, everybody been through some shit, you know, everybody been through some bullshit in their life and you got to learn from your own mistakes. Back to the pleasure piece. People made decisions to for uh instant gratification. Get on with it, dude. Jesus Christ. People chose the instant gratification and and hey, Sometimes it paid off. Sometimes it didn't pay off. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I that's what pretty much what I got on it. But you know, everybody got, the bottom line is everybody got to make choices, and that's what life is about: choices. You know, good, bad, or indifferent. Make your choice and just rock with it. So. When when it comes to making the decision of, of what you're going to do, the most important thing to remember is why. Why are you doing this? The why is going to inform you how important what you've decided to do is and also inform you the direction you need to go. So whenever I work with my clients, I always create a, a timeline um, map. And this timeline always includes where they're starting from, where they want to go. And then there's a big gap in between. And unless you know what the milestones are that are going to let you know how, how close you are to your goal, and those milestones all have their own steps in them to accomplish that one phase. So whatever it might be, if, if you've got a, I don't know, if you've got a, uh, goal to solve world hunger, for example, then you've got to know what steps you need to take in order to get there. And I use that as, a, as an example just to be outlandish, but it's, it's all, no matter what it is that you want to do, whether you want to build a business, whether you want to find that, that right relationship for you, whether you want to create an established community, whatever it might be, there are always going to be steps involved that need to be accomplished in order to get there. And knowing what steps you have to take in the right order to accomplish them is vital for getting to wherever you want to go. And well, yes, there are some times that it is appropriate to experience things that are just going to feel good as something that the Aaron had said before was having a stoic mindset while not denying yourself completely, right? allowing the times where to let loose and just let your hair down and just have some times to decompress away from just the grind is important as long as it doesn't get in, in the way of achieving the goal, making sure that the goal is paramount and that you're working towards that goal continuously, whatever it might be. If there are people in the way of getting that goal, you weed them out. If there are situations that get in the way of that goal, you change them. If there are circumstances that you are experiencing that get in the way, find a new experience that is going to allow you to get towards that goal. And if you can't, if you find that the goal is a little bit too insurmountable, maybe you need to change the goal temporarily. You need to have a shorter goal that will allow you to get to where you need to go and you just need to take different steps. Not that you need to, need to abandon the goal, but maybe the milestones that you, you created are not right for what you want to accomplish. And this requires feedback. One thing that you had said deep into me was that you have one life to live and you have to know how you uh, where, um, what you need to do and stay away from the things that are going to uh, be against you or something like that. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing really badly. I would count you as saying that sometimes you have to experience what not to do 
in order to have a very clear idea of what to do. And being able to be able to experience things that are not going to work for you are just as valuable as as the experiences that work for you. And identifying the ones that don't work for you, and then staying away from those. That's something that, that I've I've had to accomplish that I've had to experience a lot of is knowing what not to do in order to have a very clear idea of what needs to get done. Sometimes that that that, that is the way. But knowing why you are experiencing something is the most important thing. What is it you want to get done? What is it you need to do? And why are you doing these things? Why are you, why are you allowing or having the experiences that you are having? And then be as intentional as possible with what you can do. I, I yield them like that. Cool, gentlemen. I won't take up too much more of your time. Um, Pat at the table, it was a pleasure talking to you tonight. You said my favorite thing I heard in this whole show, which is ultimately for the permanent results you want, you got to be your own hero. And what I see here between the three of y'all is um, I, I see Mel being his own hero. He's got convictions. He, he believes in how he's going about. He knows it's the right way for him. And I see him standing on business and sticking to it. I respect it. Um, I, I like how Jason's got an approach that's geared towards helping people find out better how they can become their own hero. Um, you know, uh, identify the obstacle. How can you remove it? How can you strategize around it? Stuff like that. Um, for me, I, I tend to, I feel like I tend to agree with all three, right? That's my, that's my thumb screw is being too agreeable. Um, I think you, uh, all three of you guys brought something really important to this discussion, and I won't beat a dead horse by by going any further into it. I appreciate your contributions, and that's all I got for you today. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't on mute before I started talking again. Excellent points. I think everybody I said what they needed to say tonight. I stand as I stand by everything I said. Uh, my my stance on this goes just beyond personal. It's not personal to me. A lot of people are in situations where they just jump into things because it's fun or it feels good for the moment and they don't really understand the things that come with that responsibility so all this was was a, a gentle reminder to think before you act shout out to miss canning all seasons Mr. Greg Kelly, Mad Mystic, everybody who pulled up on IG, everybody watching from Rumble and Twitch, I thank you. I thank you, Jason. I thank you, Aaron. I thank you, uh, Mr. Six Rings, for coming out. And I thank everyone that's watching from the other side. Leave a comment on the stream. It is going to be posted. Let me know what y'all thought about this. Um, my my main question to the people is: How do you feel, or do you, or would you look at a person any any differently for practicing celibacy? Just a side a side quest. What are your thoughts on that? Uh. Great stream, fellas. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Friday is around the corner. I'm looking forward to doing absolutely nothing. Hopefully, Lord willing, they lift my ban on YouTube so I can get back to what I was doing because I got some things that I want to upload. But you guys have a 
great night. Everyone that is watching, if you're not following the gentlemen up here, go check out their pages. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, pull up, email me. Let's talk, let's collab, let's let's do something. The more the merrier. The more the merrier. This is assembly of oh what hold up shout out to uh Derek Derek just pulled up in the building one of the OGs Salute brother before dropping through we gotta get you back up here one of these days bro I know you got a lot going on but yeah we, we gotta connect again bro um Y'all enjoy the rest of the evening, though. We 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 out. Super Bowl. <laughs>